Hi everyone, I'm Rich from the UK and today I'm here with Eve from Belgium and we're going to have a nice discussion about hypes in the detailing industry and how they relate to Gion. Ask me anything you want about uh, the hypes, I'm happy to answer. <laughs> have we got all day? <laughs> uh, so that's, yeah, we have some time so it's not, it will not be cool. a problem. So. Well let's get stuck into the big one then that probably everyone expects us to, to talk about with hypes of the industry and being Gion, coatings. Where do we even begin with this? Well, what, what I like to say is some people have the, a lot of questions about do we have a ceramic coating, do we have a glass coating, do we have a nano coating, do we have, uh, what, what's, what are the differences? You know? Sure, yeah, and for me that, that came out in the early days. I mean, first of all, we started out hearing the term quartz, then we hear the term ceramic, and then from Asia comes the term glass, and then the Americans picked up on ceramic all the time, and it was back and backwards yeah. and forwards, and you think, what is it? But when you look at it, fundamentally, they're all the same. All the same. All the yeah. same. It's exactly. uh, and I, I don't have any problem with it by the fact that people change names. The only thing is it, it sometimes it it brings in confusion confusion for for the end customer. Yeah. And people start changing brand or product with no reason at all. And yeah. in the end, that's not the goal of making a proper product to no. change for the change. You have to if you change. That's that's why our philosophy is we will not make or change any product when it's hardly improvable or yeah. it's not only about the name it's in the end it's always about the product yeah and what's in it and how and it functions exactly yeah. and so that leads me on I mean, a good topic of conversation there is the way that silica based coatings if we want to call them that as the collective mm -hmm. term how they've evolved over the last 10 years in particular mm -hmm. you know obviously we, we we start out on a certain pathway but then we get to the point where people start to infuse them with different things claiming new benefits and it seems like for me Every year, you know, you can count back and you can think, ah, oh, that was the year when, for example, like I remember 2018 and titanium was the big thing, titanium oxide, and, and then we had the silica carbide mentioned, and it, it seems to me it's hard to keep up with the, the next big hype that, that's the ten, coming up. The 10 H hardness, etc., yeah. etc. So, I mean, <laughs> when you talk about coatings and infusion, titanium, we can even infuse gold or we can infuse silver in any coating. If you want a gold infused coating, it's very easy to make, but in the end, when you infuse zero point, uh, like Contador said, zero, 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 <laughs> point zero, <laughs> in, in the product, what does it change in properties? Yeah. Can it have any functionality? Can it yeah. have any functionality? Yeah. Same yeah. with like titanium or carbon or whatever they say, yeah, we use this in the, the cylinders of the engines because it's really hard. Yeah, might be, but it's not in that form that you put it on the paint. No, exactly. So what's Thick the, film versus extremely thin what's film. What's the point? Yeah. Without, without having, I, I fully understand it and I fully understand that people want some, some change, but in the end, I, 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 I like to quote, I don't care if the cat is black or white as long as it catches the mouse. Exactly. So yep. if it doesn't catch the mouse, you can put anything in it. It's it's no not difference. it's not helping. Yeah. And it's it, it, you will you will let down customers because they will have expectations that will not be fulfilled. Yeah. And in the end, as a brand, the goal is to to have happy customers. Exactly. Yeah. I think it brings me back. Actually, there's a quote that I really liked from Mike Phillips in America when he said to people who were always asking him about how do I pick a coating, and you know, rule one is go with an established brand because there you can assume that they've done their research, they've put their, their R&D hours in and they're actually confident in their product and it's going to be a stable, consistent product. But the second part of his quote was, once you've done that, turn around in a circle and that's the time it takes for a new hype and a new coating to hit the market. And that's brilliant for me because I think that just sums it up perfectly. There's always the next thing out on the market and there's then the next pitch why this is so much better than the last version. But we have so much experience in the industry of that happens and a year later, since 2015, SEMA, I've been like, we have been as a company also, fighting is a big word, but the hype of 9H, you know, mm -hmm. people thinking mm -hmm. that it has anything to do with scratch resistancy, um, people coming to the booth, yeah, it's your coating 9H, it's not on the box. All our coatings are 9H, but we don't want to put it on the box because for us it doesn't make any difference in yeah. the performance of what you really expect from a coating. Yeah. So it's good that people choose this type of marketing. It's it's for us to explain that's not mm -hmm. our philosophy. Um, and then 2015, we got 2016, 17. 
every year we had the brand new game changer. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I said, okay, let's see in 2017. And the game changer of 2016 was not existent anymore. <laughs> it was a new one. <laughs> exactly. And so, like, le like you said before, choose reliability. Choose yeah. something that works. And and if that for you, and if you as a customer like to try out a new product, for sure, why not? But yeah. in the end, it's it's on the long run that you have to to see what's what yeah. what keeps working. Okay, so I guess the buzzword then we have to address following on from this conversation for this year, the buzzword is graphene. Um, you know, and <laughs> I'm going to take a drink on graphene. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, you know, I, I've been looking myself and reading and, and following the various pieces of information. So from my perspective, you know, my background, I mean, obviously coming in from many years as a reseller in the market, multi-brand, and then coming in as a distributor uh, for Gion, and then still trying to keep pace with the wider market, it strikes me that we have a lot of comments out there from from companies that are just obviously pushing their next product. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Then we have comments out there from uh, independent reviewers, um, and, and some of them are truly independent, some of them are not, some of them are sponsored. And then we have comments from, from manufacturers out there as well. Uh, and for me, those are the ones that I'm, I'm placing kind of most faith in. Um, and I just wonder what your perspective is. I mean, our viewers are obviously gonna be wondering, are Gion gonna do a graphene coating? And, and where do we stand with that? And what's our thoughts at the moment? For the moment, in uh, with the things that we know chemically, um, it's again, like I said, titanium and, and carbon, whatever. If we cannot, graphene is an amazing product. Graphene on its own, it's mm -hmm. like 100 or 200 times stronger than steel. But yeah. like I said before, if you cannot make it in this form, r acting on the paint, what's the point of? Yeah. If tests show out that it's not doing what in the long run as a benefit for a customer you can put another word on it but yeah will it help will it catch the mouse yeah. so in the form it's possible to do now we are not gonna yeah in you in graphene yeah. road and i don't have any problems with people yeah if they think it's better or if they think fine but we as as brand checked and did our research and tests and we don't find anything that's that beneficial to uh, yeah consistency performance still remains the things to look for exactly there are yeah. far um, more important things in a coating than it's like it's like a chef you know you have chefs top chefs we can both make mayonnaise or we can both make tomato soup yeah i can pick the really good tomatoes and have the really good cream and you can not knowing or not respecting time but we both have tomato soup or we both have mayonnaise yep. but one will be better than the other mm -hmm. so i try to compare it with that it's not only about the name yeah makes yeah. sense i think we should also probably touch on then self-healing as well because you know that's gone through a for me anyway it was a buzzword phase yeah. and, and it's not a route that many manufacturers have gone down and again but it's a question that i'm asked regularly as a distributor now is you know first of all are we going to have a graphene coat and secondly are we going to have a self-healing coating well this is also a rabbit hole where um for example for me personally self-healing in a coating it's like when you go really technical i see people doing stuff with, I, I did tests with our products i'm not going to mention on paint what what has been shown on whatever social media, YouTube, look, we heat up and blah, blah, blah. On some paints, if you just have no coating, you make a scratch and you heat it up, it will hide the scratches. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because you have a thermal Thermal expansion, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then you have the expectations of customers paying top dollars for self-healing coating, and they expect it to be self-healing, if it's even self-healing for the rest of their life. So yeah. now they can wash with a, um, like a, a, you know, a rough sponge and it should, it should self-heal, yeah. which is not the case. Yeah. Um, so in, in when, when you really want something as protection, self-healing, I think the only way to go is, is PPF. Mm -hmm. And in PPF, you have a plastic that is has the possibility to, to, do, to have self-healing properties. Yeah. And you have protection against stone chips. People sometimes tend to say that ceramic coatings are, are stone chip uh, approved and everything, which is not the case <laughs> as well. This is not even a hype. but. We have our PPF, which is self-healing and has hydrophobic properties. So in that case, I, we choose to, that's the road to go. Yeah, okay, cool. One little thing, I think I don't want to spend too much time on this, but for me, we've seen a massive boom in the UK in, in the last few years with this, is PPF itself. Mm -hmm. And 
not such much as a hype, but definitely a trend. You know, mm -hmm. I think that many more new car owners now are realizing that this is the time where I definitely want to get something done to my car. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, I think the old days of people having an old used car and thinking I'm going to get it detailed, that seems to be passed. And we're now at the phase where people are making that decision when they purchase their new vehicle. How do I want to protect it? I think for me, it's still a personal choice between PPF or whether you want to actually have yeah. a car that you maintain more often yourself in a more intrinsic way. Do you mm -hmm. find that as a trend Europe globally with, with your brand and that ambassador role? Or? Well, I think it, it, it's for sure it's, it's a, a diff completely different product, but it has its place on the market mm -hmm. for different purposes. Mm -hmm. So as I said before, if you want stone chip protection, if you want a brand new car daily driven protected against stone chips, then it's the only way to go with, with PPF. Yeah. But those two products, PPF and coating, can go along very nice. For example, a lot of people tend to do, in where I live, to do like fronts and, and rockers, stone chip prone, and then do the rest of the car in, in ceramic coating for, uh, to, to match the self-healing properties and the, the hydrophobicity properties of, of, the, of the PPF, mm -hmm. uh, which are both in Protect Plus and, and, and in uh, Enhance. So they have like equal self-cleaningness and, and hydrophobicity but different purposes on different panels of the car. Yeah. For example, on older old timers, I old cellulose paint, I would never advise to put PPF on yeah. because when you pull it off, <laughs> the it's risk, bad enough anyway. The, yeah, the risk is <laughs> yeah. higher. And yeah. so it, 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 they, they both go next to each other and choose wisely, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very personal as well. Some people, we have tried to make this PPF super, super clear. So I, I, I don't like it. I'm a, I'm a paint kind of guy. I don't like um, distortion of, of paint and, yeah. and we, we, we really try to, to, to go as good as possible yeah. when you add it that you don't... Or even improve factory orange peel. Improve yeah. 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 So we, we try to do our best that yeah. way and uh, I think it, it, it goes along very nicely. Cool. I think that's a really nice point that you've touched on there really is the, the importance I think for anybody that's interested in detailing, whether they're doing it themselves or whether they want to come and get professional services, is it's the importance of finding out what works for you and what's going to actually yeah. suit your lifestyle, your yeah, car, exactly. your budget. Um, pick an established brand yeah. and then talk to them and find out actually how to best match their product to your needs. Exactly. It's yeah. as, as I said, we both have two eyes. doesn't mean we have the same view. Yeah, sure. Cool. Thank you for that. I think that was really great. Um, we hope our viewers really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. And just remember, um, keep following. Stay tuned for more Geon updates.